Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so let us take an example uh, to introduce few other concepts related to this production and cost activities. Okay. So, say in your book there is a beautiful example of a cookie factory is there. Okay. Say so one person uh, she is hiring only labor okay. and labor is the variable factor and one say small room she has hired to um, establish her uh, cookie factory inside that room right so the, uh, labor amount i am mentioning as l okay and amount of output product okay amount of cookie is producing so when i am i am or that person when using zero amount of labor hiring zero amount of labor right so total output is zero when one amount of labor one unit of labor right that time is total output is 50 two unit of labor okay that time total output is 90 three unit of labor that time total output is 120 4 unit of labor that that time total output is say 140 okay 5 unit of labor say 150 6 unit of labor is 155 and so on one interesting thing is happening here you can understand or you can see that as he is increasing uh, hiring of labor okay output is increasing, but output is not increasing proportionally. Okay, output increasing, but output increment in output is, is actually falling for subsequent amount of labor hired. Okay. Why that is so? Because look at here, the, he has some limited size of the room. right? So, within that room, right, say perhaps 2 or 3 units of labor is maximum uh, or e most economically she can accommodate. Even after that, if she wants to accommodate more and more labor, because demand for cookies is there, she wants to produce more cookie, right? So, what will happen? So, additional unit of labor, whatever he is hiring, or she is hiring, right? They will add some amount of product, okay? So, production will increase, but production will not increase as much faster it was increasing earlier, okay? So, so these kinds of things. So, this product is actually total amount of cookie. So, when zero amount of labor, zero unit of labor is having zero unit of cookies. So, one unit of labor, 50 units of cookies, two units of labor, 90 units of cookies, and so on, right. So, let us this one concept it is called marginal product. Marginal product. What is the marginal product? For every additional unit of labor, what is the additional? Uh, amount of output uh, she is getting. Okay. So, it is not a labor here in this particular example labor is our variable input that is why labor is coming into the picture, but marginal product is basically any variable input it is true for any variable input it is true. So, due to increment in one additional unit in a variable input whatever increment in total output that is called marginal product of that particular variable input right so in this particular case we have only one variable input that is labor so first units variable so marginal product 0 0 this is also 0 so first units marginal product is 50 because look at here 0 to 1 when labor unit increased that time output is increased from 0 to 50 so its marginal product is 50 units second units marginal product is basically 40 why 40? So, labor higher from 1 to 2. So, increment in labor in 1 unit out increment in production is 50 to 90. So, 40 units. So, that is why 40. Exactly same way marginal product of third unit of labor is basically 30. Fourth unit of labor is basically 20. Fifth unit of labor is 10. Sixth unit of labor is 5 and so on in that way. Okay, they are in they are, they are falling. So, marginal product is 
50, 40, 30, they are continuously falling. Okay. Now, average product, average product, how we can define average product? So, marginal product, everybody understood, I hope. It is basically due to increment, one unit increment in variable factor, what is the increment in total output? That is called marginal product of that particular variable input or variable factor. What is the average product? Average product is basically output per unit of variable input. So, per unit of variable input how much output you are producing that is called variable average product. Okay. So, so, for the first unit the zeroth unit no there is no output. So, it is 0 by 0. So, we are not considering anything or we are not calculating anything in, in undefined. So, this is average pro product is what this is basically 50 why because total output is 50 number of labor 1. So, 50 by 1 second one is 45 average product. Why? Because total is 90, it is 90 by 2 that is why 45. Third one is 40 average product. Why? Because 120 by 3. Okay. Similarly, fourth units average product is basically 140 by 4, so 35. Okay. Similarly, here it is 30 because 150 by 3. 5. So, this is basically 50, it is basically 50 by 1 in that way 50, 45, this is basically 90 by 2 in that way 45, this is basically 120 by 3, this is 140 by 4, this is 150 by 5 and so on, okay. variable pro average product. Okay. Now, cost suppose if we in if I if I may say suppose um, wage rate wage rate is rupees fifty per labor. Okay, that is the wage rate in the market. So from the labor market, she is hiring the labor uh, that factor, right? So she has to pay rupees fifty per amount of labor. Suppose, right? So fixed cost fixed cost say rupees 300 rupees 300 rupees 300 all rupees 300 why because that is the that rupees 300 that is the rent he has to pay or she has to pay for this room where she is establishing her cookie factory okay so that is fixed cost it is short run she, that the same room she has to pay right rent for that so 300 rupees. So, when she is hiring so total cost, total cost is basically so her total cost has two component total fixed cost plus total variable cost. So, here total fixed cost is how much rupees 300 only does not matter whether you are producing 50 units of cookie, 90 units of cookie, 120 units of cookie, 140 units of cookie, does not matter how much you are producing so long you are utilizing only that room okay, to produce your cookies. right? So, you are paying rupees 300 as rent for that room. right? So, your total fixed cost is rupees 300. What is your total variable cost? That depends on how much labor you are using. Okay, when you are using one unit of labor, that time your variable cost is 50 into 1. When you are using two units of labor, that time your variable cost 50 into 2, because only one variable factor is here, labor whose wage rate in the market is 50 rupees per labor. Right? So, total cost will be hot. Look at here, total cost is rupees 300, even when you are not producing anything, because fixed factor you have to pay, the rent for this room you have to pay. Okay, but you are not hiring any labor. So, your total cost that time is 300 plus 0 into rupees 50, rupees 50 is the wage rate for labor and 0 amount of labor you are hiring that is why 300. So, total cost for first unit 300. When you are hiring second unit of or first unit of labor that time it is basically rupees 350, because 300 in any case your fixed cost and 50 rupee per labor right. So, 350. 
this is rupees 400 ok. Why rupees 400? Because 300 plus 50 rupees into 2 levers. Here rupees 450. Why? 300 is the fixed cost plus 50 rupees into 3 levers. So, in that way total costs are going. Okay. So, this total cost, so if I break also into the bring into the picture total variable cost also I can bring here 0 first 0 unit right no variable cost this is 50, this is 100, this is 150 and so on everywhere number of labor unit into wage rate per unit of labor right. So, that is the variable cost. Okay. So, exact the same way the way we have defined marginal product, average product and so on, we can define average variable cost, average fixed cost, okay, marginal cost and all those things. right? Okay. So, if we define exactly, I, I am sure that you are getting a getting an impression that what is the average variable cost, average variable cost average variable cost will be total variable cost by amount of output, output quantity. Similarly, we can define average fixed cost that is total fixed cost cost by always it is output quantity. Okay. Average total cost it is usually cost uh, told uh, called as average cost sometimes it is called average total cost also. So, that will definitely total cost total cost mean total fixed cost plus total variable cost by output unit. So, look at here alternative cost component or average variable cost, average fixed cost, average total cost, marginal cost all we are going marginal cost all relative to output quantity only output quantity. So, what is the marginal cost? Marginal cost will be change in total cost due to change in output. Okay. Per unit change in output what is the total cost you are incurring or the app producer is incurring okay. that kind of. So, four alternative concepts you can bring into the picture. Now, we will draw certain diagrams to conceptualize these things or to represent whatever we have discussed so far. Let us go in a new, new slide. Okay. Say suppose, say Suppose say suppose we are measuring labor okay, and this side total output production. So, when labor unit is 0 unit output also 0. So, it is origin 0 0 from there it will start. So, you can remember suppose this is labor unit 1, this is 2, this is 3 this is 4, this is 5, this is 6 in that way right. And output when 1 unit of labor output was how much? Look at 50, 2 units 90, 3 units 120, 4 units 140 and so on right. So, definitely suppose this is 50, this is 100, 150 and so on right. So, 1 unit it is 50. 2 units it is 90. So, little bit say suppose here is 90, 3, three units it is 130 say suppose here 4 units how much 140. Okay. So, 4 unit 140 suppose here 50 unit 145 here. So, you can understand if we plot these things using a diagram this kind of diagram we are getting right. So, this curve is called total product curve. So, what is the total product curve? 
in a diagram two dimensional framework we are drawing a diagram ok where horizontal axis we are measuring the variable input and vertical axis we are measuring total output ok and in that way if we measure we will get this kind of concave kind of curve ok that is called total product curve it is usually this kind of concave curve because as you are hiring more and more variable input your uh, total output will increase look at here from this point to that point output is increasing ok this much increment in output right, but the rate at which output is increasing that is falling ok. So, this is called total product curve ok and obviously, so the, the concepts of marginal product what we have defined where here we are defined right marginal product ok. So, definitely if we have a total product curve at this point marginal product curve its slope at that point its slope at that point that is slope at every point margin increment in output due to change in or increment in variable input. So, uh, marginal increment in output due to marginal increment in level or variable input ok. So, definitely if we have a total product curve at different points marginal product is basically slope of the curve at that particular point. Okay. And average total product what we have defined average product look at here average product, average product we define what total product per unit of variable input. So, definitely if we have a diagram at this point average product is slope of this line at this point average product is slope of this line because why slope of because this much is the total output and that much is your amount of variable input. So, definitely slope of that line at this point average uh, average uh, output is average product or average output is slope of that line and so on. So, let me draw a press. So, if you have when you are measuring in general here we are telling labor because our example you take labor as a variable input. So, in general variable input we are measuring in the horizontal axis and vertical axis we are measuring output ok. So, we will get this kind of total product curve. So, at different points on that total product curve what is the average product that is basically you have to join that point with the origin in a, through a straight line and slope of that straight line will be the average product of that particular unit of the that product. So, every point that is the slope of that joining line the ray through the origin right and marginal product at this point this is the marginal product slope of this tangent at this point marginal product will be slope of this tangent at this point slope of this tangent. So, here green color tangent here say blue color tangent here say black color tangent ok. So, at different points whatever the slope of the corresponding tangent that is the marginal product ok. If we want to plot these things in a diagram right. So, these are the product kind of things. So, this is the total product curve through this total product curve we are trying to capture the knowledge level technology using which this entrepreneur ok converting variable input into output right. So, and this table we also we also demonstrate different costs right. So, if you plot those costs how it will go. So, let us take another new diagram ok. If we plot those cost right say we will for cost we will always measure in the horizontal axis output and vertical axis total cost. So, you can understand that if you see this thing when your total output is 0 that time your total cost is rupees 300 because fixed cost is there ok. So, suppose this is 300 ok. So, now remaining different outputs this side if you plot and their corresponding corresponding total cost if you plot you will get this kind of line ok. So, this is called total cost curve T C curve total cost curve right. So, definitely at this point of total cost curve what is the slope that is the slope at this point of the total cost curve this is the slope 
at this point of the total cost curve this is the slope. So, slope of this tangential points respective tangential points are the marginal cost at different points because marginal cost due to change in output marginal increment in output how much cost is increasing that way we are defining right. Not only that if I take at this point, this point, this point what is the ray through the origin if we take what they will tell? They will tell that the slope of this different ray of through the origin the slope of this different ray through the origin will be called average cost average total cost or average cost ok. And when we are having this kind of total cost curve definitely this kind of total variable cost curve is there because this is the rupees 300 that is our total fixed cost total fixed cost right. So, basically vertical gap between total fixed cost and total cost and total variable cost vertical gap is everywhere this rupees 300. So, same kind of total variable cost I will we will have which is passing through the origin ok. And if we take different it is different points respective uh, ray through the origin their slope that is called average variable cost. These are average total cost or average cost and slope of these lines are called average variable cost average variable cost ok. Now, we will try to understand. So, when output is increasing or when this diagram the rate at which your variable factor is increasing output is increasing much more lower rate right as, as subsequent you need know output is increasing output is increasing in any case, but it is increasing in the lower rate than the rate at which the variable factor is increasing. And since cost curve we are measuring uh, total cost uh, total amount of output in the horizontal axis we are getting a sense that this kind of total cost curve we will get for the short run we will try to understand that using a beautiful diagram. This diagram is not there in your book ok. Try to understand how we can draw uh, that using the total product curve how we can derive the total cost curve ok ok. So, say panel 1, panel 2, panel 3 and panel 4, 4 panels we have. So, panel 1 we are plotting the total product curve. So, definitely we are measuring total output, say output in the vertical axis in panel 1 and horizontal axis variable input. Horizontal axis of the panel 1 we are measuring variable input ok. Now, so look at here when we are plotting the total cost curve drawing total cost curve what we have to measure in the horizontal axis total output look at here what we are measure now, this is the cost curve total output because all kinds of cost concepts it is the vis a vis output vis a vis output average cost total cost by amount of output marginal cost. Uh, due to change in output how much uh, cost is increasing or how much cost is changing right. So, any concepts four alternative concepts of uh, average cost, average fixed cost, average variable cost and marginal cost these four concepts everywhere due to the output. So, total cost curve or any kind of cost curve when we draw okay, horizontal axis we will always measure output. So, first quadrant diagram or panel 1 we are measuring output in the vertical axis. Panel 4 here we want to show the total cost curve. So, we have to transform this output which is measured in the vertical axis to the horizontal axis of panel 4. So, let us convert this output into second panels horizontal axis. So, I am measuring output here output here 
okay, and this line is a basically a 45 degree line. By virtue of the 45 degree line, right? So, at this point, what is the amount of output? This much of output, right? That much of output is this much of output. That much of output is exactly this much of output. So long this line is 45 degree line. Take another point, this. That point is basically this much of output. This much of output means this much of output. This much of output means this much of output. Because by virtue of the fact that this is 45 degree line. right? So, in that way, every point on the total product curve we can convert that amount of output into the horizontal axis in panel 2 taking one 45 degree line. We are bringing this 45 degree line as an ornament into the picture to help us converting vertical axis what we are measuring into the horizontal axis same thing. Now, look at here this point suppose point A, this is suppose point B and this is suppose point C. So, A point how much variable input that factor is hiring this much variable input b point how much variable input this much variable input c point this much variable input and so on right so definitely what will be the total variable cost total variable cost will be a straight line ray through the origin okay it will be ray through the origin because and slope slope is equals to basically price of variable input. Market price of the variable inputs. We did not tell anything about the factor market. So, by default factor market is competitive and that is why uh, price of the every unit is same like our example labor, labor uh, price is rupees 50 per unit. right? So, definitely this much of variable input its total cost variable cost will be this much this vertical distance because the slope of this line is basically the price of the variable input. This much the variable inputs total variable cost is this much because the slope is constant that is why we are taking a ray through the origin. So, this ray through the origin we can tell total variable cost line. Okay. If that is the case, since it is a short run, we, we, we will have a total fixed cost line, this kind of total fixed cost irrespective. So, in the panel 3, we are measuring in the vertical axis total cost, total variable cost and total fixed cost, all 3 we are measuring. So, this is total fixed cost, total variable cost line is this ray through the origin and if you sum up them we will get this will be the total cost line, total variable cost and total cost line are parallel to each other. Total cost is parallel to total variable cost in this diagram, both are straight line. Okay. Now, what we have to convert this total cost, this total cost say this is A prime, this is B prime, this is C prime. A prime point is showing that total cost for A point, B prime total cost for B point, C prime total cost for C. So, if we the fourth quadrant or fourth panel 4, we are measuring horizontal axis output and vertical axis all these three types of cost. Okay. So, if we measure that, what it will go? So, when your output is 0 at this point, output is 0, total cost is this much because that time only total fixed cost. When output is this much, that time your total cost is what? This is the total cost, so this is the total cost. This much of total cost is responsible for how much of output? That is responsible for this much of output. This much of total cost is responsible for how much of output? This much of output this much of total cost is responsible for how much of output this much of output so if you plot those points no you will get this kind of because this is this should be here because my drawing i am drawing in the hand no if you use the scale right you will get this kind of line 
Okay. It is a very, very beautiful diagram how you can draw or rather you can draw this is your total cost curve. So, in that your total variable cost curve no, you will get this kind of thing. Look at here total variable cost curve we are getting a straight line through the origin when we are measuring the variable input in the horizontal axis in panel 3. Variable input we are measuring in the horizontal axis that time we are getting a straight line. Alternatively, if we, we if we plot output in the horizontal axis, we will get this kind of total variable cost curve. Okay. So, this is total cost curve and this will be total variable cost curve. So, you basically bring a 45 degree line in this axis that panel 2 okay, just to convert the what you measure in the vertical axis here output that you transpose into the horizontal axis 45 degree line will help you. Okay. And you draw you, you capture the total cost, total fixed cost, total variable cost all are into the vertically down of panel 1 here V sub is the variable input, variable input you are measuring horizontal axis. Here you are measuring output and here you are measuring this panel 4 horizontal axis you are measuring output and vertical axis you are measuring all 3 cost total cost, total variable cost, total fixed cost. Okay. So, as a result you will get this kinds of things. Okay. So, uh, so let me let me just sum up. So, if you have this kind of total product curve when you are measuring variable input this side horizontal axis and output in the vertical axis, you will have a short run total cost curve this kind where you are measuring output in the horizontal axis and vertical axis total cost. If you measure vertical axis total fixed cost also, you will get this kind of a fixed line. If you measure total variable cost also, you will get exactly parallel kind of this line. So, this is total cost, this is total variable cost, this is total fixed cost, this kind of diagram you will get. Now, average cost how you will measure? Definitely average cost, average variable cost, average fixed all will come from the mother total. Okay. So, if we plot those in a single diagram, this kind of curve we will get because you are measuring output in the horizontal axis and vertical axis all types of cost, different types of cost, whatever we are measuring. So, this will be called average fixed cost. Average fixed cost curve will be a rectangular hyperbola. Why? Look, you are measuring output in the horizontal axis and vertical axis you are measuring average fixed cost. By virtue of the fact that that way we have defined that average fixed cost, it is total fixed cost by the output. So, output into average fixed cost is total fixed cost and total fixed cost is in the short run. So, long you are in the short run total fixed cost is fixed. In our example, it is 300 rupee only that rent for that room, right? does not matter how much output you are producing. When you are out producing 50 units of cookies, fixed cost is 300 rupees, 90 units of cookies, same 300 rupees, 120 units of cookies, same 300 rupees and so on. Right. So, basically average fixed cost into amount of output will be total fixed cost. Since total fixed cost is fixed in any case, you will get average fixed cost line as a rectangular hyperbola. Okay. Rectangular hyperbola we have introduced sometimes back, you can remember. And total variable cost, so every point if you take this kind of slope, right. So, it is corresponding that the rays slopes are increasing continuously, right. But look at here average total cost initially their slope is falling, falling there is maximum uh, minimum suppose here and after that point it is increasing. So, average total cost this kind of thing average total cost curve will be an U shaped kind of line okay? and average variable cost curve will be this kind of thing. Okay? So, in our next lecture we will discuss specifically what is the relationship between average. So, this is average variable cost, this is average total cost, this is average fixed cost and so in our next class we will in a single panel we will try to introduce average variable cost curve, average total cost curve and marginal cost curve also. Marginal cost we have we are not introducing here so far 
before introducing that or before drawing that marginal cost diagram right, we will do some small a little bit mathematics that will help you people to understand. Okay. In fact, in fact, uh, in an usual way when you are measuring output here okay, and all three types of cost that side, so to, uh, average cost average cost means average total cost in that sense, average variable cost and marginal cost if we measure usually average total cost curve is a U shaped kind, average variable cost curve is also a U shaped kind and marginal cost curve will be this kind. So, marginal cost curve should cut average variable cost curve at its lowest point, if is lowest point also average total cost curves at ATC's lowest point. MC curves should cut both the respective lowest points of ABC and ATC. This is ATC we are talking about average total cost. Okay. So, both why the lowest point not only that ABC curve and MC curve should start from the same point at the vertical axis. Why that? Th this kind of diagram is there in your book, but why that is the case? It is not clarified. That we will clarify in our next class. Let us stop here.